All right, as you know, I've been running these grid tie inverters on my system for quite a while now. I haven't had any problem with them. Uh, I only run them. They're rated, you know, 250 or 300 watts. I usually only run about uh, 135 watts, the maximum I put in. Have no problem at all. Occasionally, you have a fan come on on those. It might get a little squeaky. You got to put some oil in there. Otherwise, they work pretty well. But they'll, they've been making some changes to the basic uh, inside, so I'm going to show you some of the latest grid time inverters that I've gotten in for a repair from other people. Just kind of show you what some of the changes have been. All right, so let me show you the inside of one of these original ones here. This is a, a bad unit. It's basically it's got a bad transformer shorted inside. The transformers, I can't get the replacement parts, so I have a bunch of these that I can kind of use them as. Uh, spare part collectors. Uh, you get the AC on this side. This is a 110 input. Uh, instead of having a switch on the uh, back plate here where it sometimes is located in that slot there, they just hardwire the 120, 110, 220 hardwired in the board here. Uh, the other end here, they have a board <coughs> for over for uh, reverse voltage sensing sometimes there's one or two MOSFETs on here and then uh, on this round spot here there'll be a buzzer on some of the uh, units and then um, <coughs> in here is typically where the or that's actually where the DC capacitor is and then the DC MOSFETs are here for those and for the AC they uh, usually have one or two of those go bad or one or two of these go bad on this side Here's the AC fuse down here, and here's the DC fuse over here. Those are the main things that go bad. There are a bunch of diodes on this side. I've never had any of those go bad. Uh, and then there's a bunch of parts <coughs> on the back side of these boards. A microprocessor up here. Uh, some analog parts in here. A lot of service mount parts. Uh, I've had to replace a couple of small resistors on the backside at times, but generally the problem's been up in the MOSFET area or the capacitor that I pointed out. So I've moved over to one of the newer style ones that you've seen maybe on eBay. It kind of looks like this. It's kind of like another generation. Same basic uh, unit. Now they're jacking them up to 350 watts rating on them. They're essentially inside the exact same thing. They have, uh, like in this case here, they have they have no selection for 220, so they've taken that option off the board. <coughs> the, uh, the AC fuse is still there, transformer still there. We've got three of the AC MOSFETs up there. There's four here, and then what used to be on the board back up here, they've mounted over. To one part in the corner here. I have one of the MOSFETs out here because that's bad being replaced. Capacitor in the same spot. They have two voltage regulators uh, here now on this particular one. But essentially everything else is the same on the board. It's the uh, same basic design. The fan's a little bit more of a pancake fan than the ones that you've seen before. So that one is also a spare parts one but it's a little bit of different and different view of uh, what's going on inside here on these now. And then I got another one in today, <coughs> which was kind of interesting. It's this grid tie 360. Got to get another 10 watts on it, right? Uh, I'm not sure exactly where it came from, but essentially, you look inside here quick. Essentially, got the same kind of layout. The main difference is I'm noticing on here. The, uh, they kind of have it laid out. Let me see if I switch it around to be equal to this other one here on this AC side. Usually you have the the uh, flashing LEDs on the AC side, as you can see here. But on this particular one, they're on the DC side. You can see them over here. Uh, otherwise, things are similar. They have uh, the same MOSFETs, including the uh, the one uh, over reverse voltage sense MOSFET there. And the AC ones in there. They got the diode, diode ones on this side. There's the AC fuse. There's the DC fuse. And now here's the buzzer here on the board. 
there instead of back on this separate board. So the end plate on this one, you can see where the LEDs come out here. The red fault one and then the three uh, green LEDs that you're used to seeing. Not sure what's bad with this one yet, but uh, actually I do know a little bit about it. If you look at this uh, capacitor here, like one of the other ones I repaired, it's blown out. So this capacitor has gotten overstressed, over voltage most likely. It's a 7, 4700 microfarad, 35 volt, which I have a bunch of those. So I'm going to replace that and hopefully I'll be uh, in good shape with this one. Alright, here's the blown capacitor. Kind of blew out the bottom on that one instead of out the top, which happened on the other one I did. And I got the new replacement one in there. So, let's see if it works. Alright, I've got my voltmeter connected up. Or excuse me, my bench supply. Connecting up to 120 on this side. Got my DC coming in over here. So I'll just initially just watch these lights here. As I turn the voltage up. See the red light comes on, I'm about 9 volts, 13, 14, 18 volts. Red light's still on, that says I still got a problem on the AC side, I think. I'll shut her down. See what's going on. Alright, the first thing to check is just this AC fuse here. Just kind of looking around the edges, it looks a little bit dark. So it's most likely blown. Flip it over. It's these two nodes right there. So I put my uh, got my little probe meters here. So when I get them, uh, if I can do this, bear with me here, folks. I'll test it right now. Sure enough, no signal. Put the probes together, so the fuse is blown. So I'm going to change that out and see where we're at. Yeah, so you can see I got it unsoldered there. You can see where it's uh, browned out there. She's blown. Put this new one in there now. Alright, I got the new uh, fuse in there. Now there's these four MOSFETs. And I've learned this lesson before. Change the fuse, plug it in, fuse pops again. So it's usually one of these MOSFETs have been shorted out. So if you take your plus or minus probe, put your ammeter on about 40k scale, in my case. Uh, obviously if I short the leads together the meter is going to go down to basically zero ohms so if I'm probing across any one of these I'm using the uh, just going between the two outer uh, which is the source and the gate sorry you can't see that real well but hard to do this let me take my word for it. I'm going to go between the source and the gate. So the two outer things. Look up here, it should be three. If I go to the next one, guess what? That one's shorted. Go to this one here. Throw them together. She's good. Go to this one. Together. That way. I can flip these around. Red to the right, black to the left, do the same thing. That's open, so that's not shorted. That one's not shorted. Number three here. Guess what? Shorted. So that one definitely is bad. This last one here. And that one's good. So this one here has got to go. To change that one out, I bet it works. Alright, so I got that uh, one replaced there. I thought while I'm here, I'm going to check these here for the same thing. 
on the DCs here, so let's see if I can get through that again. All right, so I'm going to start probing these here. I'll just read it off to you here. I'll put these two on this side. Reading 11K. 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 11K ohms. And zero ohms. So this last one here is blown. It probably blew when the capacitor blew. I'm going to reverse the probes. Check again. That's open circuit, 17K, 17K, 22K, 22K. I'm going to replace this guy and then we'll try it. What I usually do is just clip the part off, then unsolder those leads, uh, clean out the, the V a hole, and solder in the new part. All right, moment of truth. Got the AC connected up. Got all my parts in here. Double checked everything's not shorted. Got my DC coming in from my bench supply over here. Got a kilowatt WANF meter. Going to read mine. Grid tied watts coming out. All right, so let's crank this up. I have a setup so the voltage is down at uh, three volts to start. I'm looking at the uh, LEDs here. Start cranking the power up. Okay, the red light came on and shut off. Let's get that voltage up. 12, 13 volts. Green lights are starting to boogie a little bit. Starting to get a little power. Got about one. Let's get up to two amps here on the left. 18 volts. 40 watts coming out. Boogie lights are going good. All right. Live to die another day, grid tie. So what does that take? One MOSFET, one AC part, this MOSFET, this cap, and that's done. Catch you later.